Across the history of time, music has been used in all cultures for healing and medicine. Every culture has found the importance of creating and listening to music. Even Hippocrates believed music was deeply intertwined with the medical arts. The power of musical intervals is one of the reasons why listening to music is healing for us. A musical interval is formed when one note is played with another. An interval can also be created by playing two notes simultaneously. When two notes are played together, the interval has a stronger effect on us. The frequencies of the interval's two notes create a mathematical ratio that affects the body in various ways. It is overwhelmingly healing for the body and mind to listen to all the intervals in the musical scale. Pythagoras discovered that musical interval ratios, such as planets and constellations, can be found in nature. He thought musical intervals mirrored the natural order of the heavens and nature. Music purifies the soul, restores vitality to the body, and calms the mind and emotions. Recent studies have revealed that both bird and whale songs contain musical intervals. Crop circle formations also contain ratios of musical intervals. Researchers have discovered that musical intervals profoundly affect man's pulse and respiration. Fabien Mamon discovered that playing musical intervals can kill cancer cells. Western music uses the eight-note scale, or octaves C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The white key on the piano represents the diatonic, or chromatic scale. An octave above middle C will continually vibrate as fast and twice the frequency of middle C. Different patterns appear on the screen when two intervals are played through an oscilloscope. The octave creates the two-to-one ratio in the pattern shown below. Notably, the Roman word for eight is octave, and the resulting pattern is a figure eight. Men's and women's voices are usually an octave apart when they sing together. People who listen to the octave report feelings of togetherness, balance, and wholeness. This interval is calming, meditative, and grounding. The notes C and G in the same octave create a three to two ratio. Because G is the fifth note of the scale concerning C, this interval is known as the fifth. The fifth interval has a three to two ratio that conveys a sense of completion and creativity and increases power and movement. Hildegard of Bingen, a medieval mystic, used it in her musical compositions to express openness, joy, and healing. The fifth interval is known as the perfect fifth because it has a harmonic relationship with the fundamental tone. The harmonic G is produced when the note C is sounded. The fifth interval is compared to a parent-child relationship. The fifth interval was thought to balance heaven and earth, yin and yang in classical Chinese music. This interval served as the foundation for all classical Chinese music. The fifth interval can be found in sacred music and has a harmonizing effect on the human body. When a string is plucked, the fifth is the second harmonic. It adds depth and beauty to the note. When building sacred structures in the past, architects used the ratios found in musical intervals. Buildings with these ratios are visually appealing and have an uplifting effect on human consciousness. According to the philosopher Goethe, sacred architecture is frozen music. Johannes Kepler was a German astronomer, mathematician, and mystic who lived between 1571 and 1630. He devoted his life to discovering the cosmic proportions and musical harmonies represented by the distances and orbits of the planets. Kepler's final work, The Harmonies of the World, was published in 1619. In it, Kepler presented his discovery that when Saturn is farthest from the Sun, it moves at a rate of 106 seconds per day. When it's closest to the Sun, it moves at 135 seconds per day. The ratio between these extremes differs only two degrees from the musical interval of a third major ratio of four to five. Kepler determined the musical intervals for the remaining five planets and the Moon. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto had not been discovered yet. 
He devised a method for determining the proper pitch, octave, and rate at which the planet would gradually change from its fundamental pitch to the indicated interval pitch and back again based on its distance from the Sun. Scientists have discovered that each planet emits sounds. Cassini, NASA's space probe, recently passed close to Jupiter, capturing sounds and dramatic moving images from the planet. The sounds are patterns detected in the magnetic field between Jupiter and the Sun, recorded as low-frequency radio waves by Cassini and converted into sound wave frequencies to be heard. According to Georgi Dotsi's book The Power of Limits, the intervals of the fifth and fourth repeatedly occur in nature, such as vein structures of leaves. In 1974, Fabien Mamon was working as a jazz guitarist. During a concert tour in Japan, he noticed that the audience did not clap at the end of each piece. They would only clap at the end of the concert. The silence after each piece puzzled him initially, but he began to anticipate and enjoy it after a while. In the silence, he began to sense the impact of each piece of music on him. He noticed that he had more energy after a concert. Mamon realized that after three months of touring Japan that clapping in between pieces was actually destroying some of the benefits of the music. Fabian observed that specific musical keys energized both the musicians and the audience. The same music had a different effect when played in a different key or at a different time of year. Fabienne Maman met Hélène Grimal, a senior researcher at Paris National Center for Scientific Research in 1981. She was curious about the effects of music on human cells. Thanks to their friendship, Maman and Grimal were able to devote a year and a half to a study of the impact of sound on cancer cells. They went to the University of Jussieu in Paris five nights a week for a year and a half carrying out their experiments at night in the biological research laboratories. They had to wait until the subway was shut down for the night so the vibration wouldn't interfere with their experiments. They tested healthy blood cells, hemoglobin, and cancer cells. In the first experiments, they used a camera mounted on top of a microscope to photograph the inside structure of each cell as it reacted to the various sounds they made. They used Curlian photography in the second group of experiments to record changes in the electromagnetic field of the cells as they received the sounds. Curlian photography depicts the subtle energy field that surrounds living things. They took thousands of photographs during their investigation. The sound was produced 30 centimeters away from the cells and had an amplitude of 30 to 40 decibels. Even though the sound was very low, it always caused noticeable changes in the cells. As the sounds progressed up the musical scale, the cancer cells would explode at a certain frequency as the sound traveled outward from the cell's center to its outer membrane. They investigated the effects of sound on normal and malignant cells using drums, gongs, flutes, guitar, bass, xylophone, and the human voice. According to Fabien, I used the tempered scale and sounded the chromatic intervals one note at a time at a distance of 30 centimeters from the cell. The experiment yielded the most dramatic results when I used the human voice and the musical scale. The combination of the human voice and the musical scale caused the HeLa cancer cells to explode more rapidly and predictably. According to French physicist Joel Sternheimer, elementary particles behave like musical notes on a chromatic scale. According to Fabian, the explosion in cancer cells is caused by the resonance between the sounds we make and the elementary particles within the cell. The accumulation of all the sounds of the musical scale created an intolerable dissonance that broke up the cancer cells. Maman and Grimal discovered that at sound frequencies ranging from 440 hertz to 493 hertz, cancer cells break down, causing their structure to become completely disorganized. Healthy cells, on the other hand, remained intact or grew stronger. He says the healthy cells appeared supple and able to freely receive, absorb, and return the energy. 
In contrast, the cancer cells appeared inflexible and immutable in their structure. Fabian Maman took healthy blood cells and played the xylophone to them. He captured changes in the electromagnetic field surrounding the cells using Curlian photography. When subjected to a chromatic scale, the energy field around the blood cells changed shape and color. The sound frequency had the most significant influence on the color produced in the cell's energy field, whereas the sound quality had the greatest impact on the shape of the cell's energy field. A half-tone difference would result in a completely different shape and color in the cell's energy field. He discovered that the note C lengthened the energy field around the cells, D produced a variety of colors, E made the field spherical, and A, 440 Hz, changed the color from red to pink. Fabienne says about the note A or 440 Hz, thus A440 is a powerful sound of harmonization. This Indian pink color, as seen in the image, always appears when A440 is played. Regardless of the instrument, pink is widely regarded as the color of love. Fabian's next experiment involved taking a blood sample from a person's finger. He requested that the individual sings to their blood cell. Then he photographed what happened to the blood cell when the person sang the major scale's seven notes. Each note changed the shape and color of the cell's energy field. When the person sang an F to their blood cells, the cells perfectly resonated with the voice, resulting in a balanced round shape and vibrant complementary colors of magenta and turquoise. Hans Jenny, a Swiss scientist, spent over 10 years in the 1960s conducting experiments to discover the effects of sound waves on materials such as glycerin, mercury, gel, liquids, powders, and iron fillings. Jenny used modern technology to create a tonoscope, an instrument that produces a picture of the patterns that sound creates in these various materials. Jenny would send electronically generated sound through oscillating crystals to vibrate a metal plate containing various materials. Jenny called his study cymatics, from the Greek word chyma, which means wave. Different sounds would generate different patterns. As the frequency of the sound increased, these simple forms disintegrated and complex patterns emerged. Jenny was fascinated by how sound vibrations created geometric shapes. A low frequency sound generated a simple circle, whereas a higher frequency increased the number of concentric rings surrounding a central circle. In his book Secrets in the Fields, Freddie Silva says, Many of the vibrational patterns found in Jenny's photos mimic crop circle patterns. These include the circles surrounded by concentric rings, the tetrahedon at Barbary Castle in 1991, the spider's web mandala at Avebury from 1994, and the highly structured star fractals of 1997. Other photos demonstrate geometry within the crop circle's pattern. On June 18, 2008, the Times reported that a Wiltshire crop circle contained the symbolic code for the first 10 places of pi. Quote, mathematicians are stunned by a new crop circle which apparently represents a perfect coded image of a complex equation. The circle is apparently a coded image representing a complex mathematical number, the first 10 digits of pi, and even astrophysicists admit they find it mind-boggling. The circular pattern was created in a barley field near Barbary Castle, an Iron Age hill fort earlier this month. Measuring around 46 meters or 150 feet in diameter, it has had crop circle enthusiasts and experts stumped. The symbol was identified eventually by Mike Reed, a retired astrophysicist who contacted Lucy Pringle, a crop circle photographer and expert, with an explanation. Math's codes and geometric patterns have long been an important factor in crop circle formations. One of the most famous formations ever created shows the image of a complex set of fractals known as the Julia set in a field near Stonehenge 12 years ago. Scientists in America have recently discovered how musical intervals can be found in whale and bird songs. They studied humpback whale and bird calls and amphibian and insect sounds. 
The scientists found the recordings of whale songs speeded up about 14 times sound amazingly like bird songs. Indeed, this whale music is said to be surprisingly beautiful, something like the sound of an oboe, muted cornet, and bagpipes. As with bird songs, humpback songs follow specific musical rules. The main difference between bird songs and their whale counterparts is that the former usually last only a few seconds, while humpback songs last from about 10 minutes to half an hour. Moreover, birds typically rest between songs. Whales, on the other hand, may sing and re-sing their songs for many hours on end. An examination of birdsong reveals a similarity with human music. There are interval inversions, simple harmonic relations, and retention of melody with a change of key. Some birds pitch their songs to the same scale as Western music. The researchers note, quote, even though they are capable of singing over a range of at least seven octaves, humpbacks use musical intervals between their notes that are similar to or the same as the intervals in our scales. Most surprisingly, humpback songs contain repeated refrains that form rhymes. This suggests that whales use rhyme in the same way that we do, as a mnemonic device to help them remember complex material. Over a season, whales gradually change their song. Since all sing the same song, they must all agree on the modifications. After a rest of about six months, the whales burst forth into song again, and all remember the old song. Even without practice over that long interval, their memories must be phenomenal. However, as they begin to sing again, the humpbacks change the details. After several seasons, the song is completely different. Leonardo da Vinci studied the proportions of the male human body as described in ancient Roman architect Vitruvius's treatise. Number one, a man's height is four cubits and thus 24 palms. Number two, a pace is equal to four cubits. Number three, the length of a man's outspread arms measured from fingertip to fingertip equals his height. Number four, one-tenth of a man's height is measured from the hairline to the bottom of the chin. Number five, one-eighth of a man's height is measured from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. Number six, a quarter of a man's height is the maximum width of the shoulders. Number seven, one-fifth of a man's height is measured from the elbow to the tip of the hand. Number eight, one-eighth of a man's height is measured from the elbow to the armpit. Number nine, the length of a man's hand is one-tenth of his height. Number ten, one-third of the length of the head is measured from the bottom of the chin to the nose. Number eleven, the distance between the hairline and the brows is one-third of the face's length. Number 12, the length of the ear is one-third of the length of the face. The ratio 1 to 2, the octave in music, is created by the distance from the pubis to the feet compared to the overall height of the body. The ratio 3 to 4 is created by comparing the distance from the nipple to the feet to the overall height of the body, the fourth interval in music. All beautiful faces, regardless of race, age, gender, or other factors, follow whole number ratios. Every organ, bone, and cell in the body has a unique resonant frequency. Like the instruments in an orchestra, they combine to form a composite frequency. When one organ is out of tune, the entire body suffers. Sound healing can help restore body balance, eliminating the need for drugs or surgery. Hearing musical intervals brings us back into tune with our natural vibration if we compare the body to a musical instrument. Our bodies are built in the proportions found in music. When we have all musical intervals sung or played in a sound healing session, our bodies receive the fundamental ratios of creation. Each interval generates a different ratio, which has a balancing effect on our body organs and cells. Intervals are like musical medicine for our bodies.